Um, so yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much. It, it's lovely to be speaking at this uh, at this conference uh, again. I think I, I, I last spoke at it a couple of years ago. Um, I want to catch up, uh, kind of catch up everyone on the state of uh, of music creativity products. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Can you can, can everyone see this? In fact, Stefano, can you can you see, see my screen? Yes, we can. Uh, yeah, great. You can see us. Great. Um, so yeah, so thank you for the introduction, the kind introduction, Stefano. I really appreciate it. Um, yes. So uh, Duke Deck was uh, Duke Deck was the the product that I actually founded back in two thousand and ten, just as a as a bit of background. Um, I think one of the reasons I'm interested in AI composition products is because we at Duke Deck thought a lot about different versions of our product and what our product should be. Um, you know, I started Duke Deck because I was interested in the field of AI composition. I didn't have a set idea at the start of exactly what the product would be. Um, and so we actually went through several iterations of our product. Our first attempt at building a product in 2012 was a product for retail environments. We thought that it would be, we thought that AI music composition could be the perfect thing for shops to play in their stores. Um, you know, on their premises, we thought they would save money, get around any problems they have. Uh, and so I went, I walked up and down a, a road in Cambridge and interviewed about 100 shop owners and found pretty much immediately that actually they were currently using Spotify illegally and they were perfectly happy with that. And they, they really didn't need a solution that involved AI music. So we quickly pivoted away from that. And our second attempt to thinking about what a product should be was a games product, a product, you know, we thought uh, games are taking off, mobile games are taking off, lots of them have music in let's provide a cheaper responsive solution using AI music. Uh, and we, we started investigating this and we quickly found that actually uh, this wasn't going to work either because most mobile users at the time were playing games with their sound off. And so they just weren't interested, uh, games companies weren't interested in licensing music uh, that, that was any more elaborate than what they were already using. So we had to pivot away from that as well. Um, and then the third product we settled on was what I think has become one of the kind of product categories of AI music composition products that I'll speak about in a minute, um, which was production music. So music for video, games, podcasts, but the kind of AI equivalent of a production library like, like Epidemic Sound or Audio Network. Um, so we created this website called Duke Deck that, that was used for generating custom music for video. Um, and we had yeah about one and a half million tracks be created over our over our lifetime. And then we joined then we joined ByteDance back in 2019. Um, so since then I've been working on product in both uh, ByteDance uh, in the music information retrieval lab and then um, then actually in TikTok the TikTok product and more recently at Snap working on a music product at Snapchat. Um, so that's kind of my background um, to those who don't know me. Um, why focus on AI music composition products? Well, I think that, you know, a lot of this conference is about research and that's brilliant, but research in a vacuum, as you all know, is, is often not worth doing. And we need to find applications of the research that we are doing. Uh, we need to find applications for this technology. And so when I think about products, I like to use this model that I think IDEO came up with back in the 90s, that any product should be desirable, viable, and feasible. Um, so the key to, to, to building a good product is to make it desirable, so users need to want it. Um, feasible, it has to be technically possible to make. And viable, there has to be a decent business model, business use case uh, around it, such that you think you can reliably make money from it in the long term. And you know, it is, I think, surprising how many AI, not AI music composition, but AI products in general, don't necessarily think about these three fundamental factors um, when designing their products. And I think they're very important for us to, um, to think about. Um, so looking into desirability, I'm not going to talk about feasibility because, you know, I think feasibility really is the subject of a lot of the rest of this conference. Um, it really comes down to the people building on the technical side. I'm going to talk mostly about how desirable are AI music composition products and how viable are they uh, as, a, as a business case. And so when we're looking at desirability, um, I think that a very useful tool that we use in product management, which many of you will come across, is the user story. Um, so where you, t you, you sort of take the user need and you frame it as, uh, in this template, as, a, as an X, as a, this type of user, I want Y, so that Z. So an example of this might be Uber. 
um, as a kind of party goer in London, I want a taxi to pick me up at the end of my party so that I don't have to do the dangerous walk to the tube or whatever it is. Like you need you need these kind of three things. Um, and so as I look at AI composition products in this talk, I'm going to be kind of asking what's the user story, what what is the user need here, and you know how much do we do we think that is a is a user need. Um, before I get onto the kind of market landscape, just a word about viability. You know, I think the one thing that's really important we as practitioners bear in mind um, around AI music composition products is that fundamentally the music industry itself is not that big. You know, twenty-one billion dollars might sound like a huge number, but when you consider that it's only an eighth the size of the global games industry, um, you know, you realize that actually we will always be facing a slightly uphill battle in building products that can, you know, that can raise the kind of investment that you sometimes need to raise and get the kind of traction that you sometimes need to get in order to build the biggest companies in the world. So it's just something for us to bear in mind. That's not to say there are not viable business models here. And as you'll see, there, there definitely are. So when I when I spoke at this conference two years ago, um, you know, there were I think I, I mentioned six existent uh, companies in my in my slides. There, there were some others, but there are now more than 20 live uh, and that, that's not the one that's ignoring the ones that have that have that have closed down or closed their doors or whatever. The 20 more than 20 live AI composition products on the market. Um, I've only got five logos here, but I promise you there are more. Um, and really, this this represents, I think, the kind of explosion in interest around AI creativity, around AI music composition that we're also seeing in other areas like art at the moment, just even in the public consciousness. Um, it's getting it's it's becoming a much more interesting proposition to build AI music composition products, partly as the tech gets better. So I tend to try to arrange these at the moment. Uh, I think new categories will emerge, but I tend to see kind of these arranged into four categories. And I'm sorry if you run a product that isn't on this list. This is not exhaustive. Um, firstly, production music. Um, production music being essentially, as I mentioned, the kind of thing we were doing at Duke Deck back in 2015. You know, this is music for music that is designed to go alongside static media. So a video, a game, a podcast, anything else. Um, secondly, uh, newer use cases, functional music, music that is designed uh, in my, in the way I define this, music that's designed to elicit some response in the user. Um, thirdly, music creator tools. This is self-explanatory, I think, things to help music creators. And fourthly, album and artist creation. So actually products that are creating full albums or full artists from scratch. And this is a newer, smaller kind of category that we can look at. Um, so firstly, production music. Uh, I think the use case here is is pretty solid, pretty established. And th this is why I think there are now a few companies, um, Duke Deck, Amper, Evoke Loudly, a, a bunch of others that have gone into this area. Um, as a video creator, this user story is, as a video creator, I want customizable rights cleared music so that I can improve my video. You know, one of the big advantages of AI composition is that you can assign whatever rights you like essentially to the end user and you can just say you can use this globally on all platforms and it turns out that is just a a really helpful thing for people who, whose music might be getting taken down by youtube and that sort of thing but also the customizable element uh, is incredibly powerful i think the most exciting feature people cared about the most when we launched duke deck was the fact that you could say i want a piece of music that is one minute 23 seconds long precisely even that very simple functionality which now looks ancient you know, is is incredibly powerful for people and actually is not something that people are used to from standard production libraries. And this really gets to the root of, I think, how we should think about AI music composition products. What is it that we can do with this technology that you cannot do otherwise? Um, and this is why I think production music has been such an effective uh, way of delivering AI composition tools. And I encourage everyone to, to look into them more. Like, it, uh, I've, I've taken Amper and Beethoven and other example at the moment as, as two examples that are products that are currently live, you know, the ability to create multiple projects and very, very rapidly spin up new music, um, the ability, as I say, to, uh, to choose duration, to specify tempo, um, to take actually other controls. This is Beethoven on the screen right now, Beethoven.ai, the ability to choose between multiple genres, the ability to have this kind of user experience that looks a bit like a kind of um, iMovie creator where you can actually upload the video. These are now pretty tried and tested usage patterns. 
and uh, they make for very, very promising products. So I think there's a clear use case there. Um, functional music, secondly, this is the second category. This is very interesting. This is where actually, you know, there have been two investment rounds in companies in the last couple of years of more than $10 million, and they're both in this space. Um, basically, you've got companies saying, we're going to give you mobile apps that are designed to give you music to focus and to sleep uh, and to relax. And I think the, the real benefit of this maybe obviously is that, you know, AI composition technology is not yet at the stage where the music it can be as complex as, as human composed music. But what it can do very well is generate this kind of music that is maybe more ambient. You know, this is a solved problem technically. And so where, where you then get a very interesting question is how do we build the best user experience to package this up? Um, and so I think functional music, uh, Endel and Amy being the two apps I would point to, but there are others are fantastic, uh, have fantastic user experiences, user interfaces, and they're really examples of people taking the existing technology and building great products on top of what is already possible and being very honest about what is possible as well with the current state of the art. I think these are, you know, as you can see from some of these screenshots, lovely design, simple user interfaces, nice features like setting timers for how long the music should play. So really taking a product kind of centric approach to the question of how should we build out build out this product and, and, and use this, this tech. Um, thirdly, music creator tools, um, Magenta being one of the obvious ones that, 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 that I think all of you would, will know. Um, I wanted to dive quickly in just a two, I think, that are very interesting. The first is Splash, which you probably would have, would have come across. Um, Splash was originally Popgun, and Splash, what Splash have done now is they've created this, this, this Roblox game where you go and you DJ to your friends. And I think what's fascinating, they've, you know, they've had millions of monthly active users. This is, I think, the most widely used AI composition product in existence. I think what's interesting about this is that they've gone all out on the use case and they've just thought, you know what, it, they're kind of leaning into the fact that the music on Splash isn't amazing. I don't think they would claim it's amazing music. You know, this isn't, you know, the music people would DJ with in clubs, but that doesn't matter. Like what Splash have done is they've built on that and they've said, I reckon we can build this incredibly compelling platform for the metaverse where the graphics are kind of funky on the metaverse anyway and and they've managed to, to build this this system that is very popular people really love doing these sets to their friends building fame on the platform and i think again leaning into the almost the limitations of ai composition and building something on top of that anyway is a fantastic thing to do and that's something that also tapes.ai i would call out what they've done i really like what this company is doing um, they're using AI to, to generate sample packs for use in music production. And the reason I love this is because it's kind of taking the limitation of AI composition at the moment, which is that in general, it's easier to come up with decent music that is short form than long term structured music. And they're saying, OK, well, actually, that's very helpful. Like short form music is helpful because it's that what you've basically got there is a sample. So let's give let's package these up as samples and let's give them to people. And I think. This kind of product thinking, I think, is, is a fantastic way of thinking about how to build AI music composition products. Like, find the limitations and think within that limitation, you know, what is the product that we can build? How can that actually be useful to people? And they've built out a great, a great product with Tapes, tapes AI. Um, I'm running out of time. Sorry, 15 minutes is not a long time. Uh, I recommend going and looking into Boomi as, as, a, as a good example of album and artist creation. I think what they're doing that's interesting is they're basically saying you don't have to be a musician and we will just give you the tools to fully create a track from scratch that you can then actually release on Spotify and streaming services. This to me is very uncharted territory. I, d I don't know whether there will be enough demand for creating music, streaming it, and then getting royalties off that. I think it's it gets at a slightly more difficult element, which we'll talk about in other talks, I think, about around the kind of ethics of, you know, how does this compete with, with human musicians and composers? But... I really admire the way they're thinking about this and the simplicity of the platform and the way it's been put together. I think it's a very interesting, uh, interesting product. Um, so just with about 30 seconds left, I will just um, kind of skip forward to, you know, what I think the hurdles, the main hurdles are in our space when thinking about products. I think firstly, we do face a problem that the, the musical quality of our systems is still generally not up there with human composed music. And we have to think about that when we're designing products. We have to think in what product is that okay? And user generated content, user generated video, uh, 
metaverse games, these kinds of things are areas that actually this music will suffice already. Um, we have to create simple interfaces. We have to abstract away the AI so it's not confusing for users. Um, and I think some of the products hopefully you've seen today really do that. We have to deal with any negative public perception. And I think we have to, this is why things like Amy that actually combine with human composed music and uh, put AI on top of that are very, are very successful. Um, we, have to com we have to compete with small markets and we have to bear in mind that we're in a tough investment cycle at the moment. It's not necessarily the best time to build products. Um, anyway, sorry, that's a, a whistle stop tour. Uh, thank you very much. Please do, um, uh, yeah, do get in touch if you're interested in this space. Uh, I just kind of launched this website uh, with a bunch of these products on. Check it out. And yeah, really would love to hear from anyone who's building an AI composition product that I haven't mentioned. Thank you very much.